welcome to another leader-led devotional. My name is Melinda Hof and I am a senior recently graduated from the University of Evansville with a degree in elementary education and I lead at Boonville High School. Um, so excited to meet some of you guys virtually that I don't know. Um, and today we are going to be reading in the book of Romans. But before we do that, I would love if we could just pray um, before we dive in. So go ahead and pray with me if you would. Lord, thank you for just this time that we have to learn more about you. I ask that you would reveal yourself to us in new ways um, as we dive into your word. And yeah, that we just praise you for technology and the gift that it is to know you better. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. So today we are going to be reading Romans 11, verses 30, verse 33, all the way to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So if you look at your Bible, the chapters are the big numbers. So go ahead and open up to Romans 11, 33, and read all the way to Romans 12, 2. Now, I know sometimes at this point in a video, I'm tempted to not actually read it and just keep listening, but I mean it. Pause this. Grab your Bible or download the Bible app and actually do read. And then unpause it and let's go through it together. So go, do it. Pause. Okay. Hopefully you got a chance to go ahead and read this. Let's start by looking at Romans chapter 11 verses 33 through 36. So important to know a little bit of background about Romans. Romans is written by a guy named Paul and he... Um, met Jesus and came to know the Lord and his life was changed after learning about who Jesus was. And he spent a lot of his life traveling and writing to people so that they could also know Jesus. Um, he helped build and create and not like physically build, but get people to come together in groups and know Jesus better called the church. Um, so this letter, Romans, was written to a group of believers in Rome before Paul was going to visit there. So people that he loves and cares about and he wants them to know who Jesus is. All right, refocusing back to Romans 11, 33 through 36. So this in my Bible looks kind of like a poem. And at this, this section at the end of Romans 11, Paul is praising God for who he is. So you'll notice Paul talks about the depth of the knowledge of God. Like God knows so much. Um, and he is wise, wiser than we could ever imagine. God doesn't need anyone to counsel him on what to do. He already just knows the best thing. And he knows his mind is so much like just cooler and smarter and wiser than ours ever could dream up. And he made everything. And so Paul just takes a moment to praise who God is. And it's important that we look at this because as we move forward into chapter 12, notice the very, very first word in chapter 12. Some of you know exactly what I'm going to say about this word. So the word is therefore. Now, if I was going to walk into a room and tell you, tell you something, I wouldn't just start with therefore, blah, blah, blah. Normally when someone says therefore, there's something in front of it that was important. And so that's the importance of reading um, the end of chapter 11. Paul just praised who God is. And so therefore, or for this reason, because of because we know who God is, that he is wise and he made all things, what Paul says next is really important because of who God is. So let's go ahead and read these two verses in chapter 12. This is Paul telling us how we're going, we're supposed to respond to who God is. It says, therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So that was kind of a lot, and we could talk about what each little bit of that means in detail, but I think it can all really be summed up in one word, and the word is transformed. So because we know who God is, and because we believe that Jesus was sent down to earth for us, that God created all things and sent, and sent his son so that we can know him better, then we should be different. And it, you'll notice he uses, look at, the, look at this phrase, okay? He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, 
Paul is telling us that if we know who God is and we believe that he is wise and made all things, we will look different, different than the world around us. Um, so that's what should happen. And I think a natural question to ask is, okay, well, if I'm supposed to be look different, I'm supposed to be transformed. Like, how do I do that? And I believe that this transformation starts to happen um, when we know God. And how do we get to know God? Well, this book right here tells a story of his son, Jesus, who he sent to earth um, to be him in human form. And so if we read this, we can get to know him. And just like any person in our lives, we don't get to know someone unless we like sit with them and talk to them and ask them questions and um, just listen to what they have to say. Now, we can't necessarily do that with God right now like we could with our best friend. But that's what this book is for is so that we can learn more of who God is. This is him speaking to us. And another way we can do that is through prayer um, and just spending time listening to God. So when we spend time with God, I believe that we start to look different. We're transformed. And as we're transformed, something really cool starts to happen. Look at the end of verse two um, in chapter 12 that we read. It says, so as we're transformed, it says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, perfect, and pleasing will. So as we spend time getting to know God, we're going to learn more of what he wants for us and what he wants for this world. Um, maybe you're a little bit like me right now. I have been really, really struggling with what in the world I'm supposed to be doing right now. A lot of my plans for the summer have been canceled um, or just in life, even before summer. A lot of cancellations, people. Um, and I just am not really sure what the Lord wants me to do um, because the way that I pictured it is not how it's ending up. And Paul is reminding us that when we spend time with God, we will have a fuller picture of his plan for our lives. And right now, I need that. And maybe you need that too. As I spend time with God, his, his plan will be revealed. And I don't know that it's going to be revealed in this like gigantic timeline of my life forever. Like I don't get to know all of it. But I do know that he will reveal to me all that I need to know for today and for this moment about his purpose for me right now and that it will be good and pleasing and perfect which is honestly sometimes better than what I could have come up with on my own so when we spend time with God we are transformed and we get to have a clearer picture of his plan for our life and right now we have been given this gift of a lot of time I know it doesn't feel like a gift but like we do have so much time and we wouldn't probably have that otherwise and so my question for all of you is, how are you spending your time? And, and, and how are you going to come out of this extra time looking different, being transformed? If as we get to know God, we look different. My hope for my time right now is that I would come out of this quarantine and this really hard season looking different, being transformed and knowing God better. So how am I going to do that? Um, and I really do think it's by spending time with him. So I don't know if this is something you guys enjoy doing or are willing to do. It might be uncomfortable, but I really, really want to encourage you if you've never done it before to try it. Take a journal, a piece of paper, or even just your thoughts um, and a pen or pencil and go sit somewhere and just think about um, the time that you've had so far, this time of quiet and rest and slowness. What has it looked like for you? Have you been feeling transformed? Do you want to feel transformed? Um, and if you're not happy with how it's been going, then how are you going to come out of this time different? How are you going to spend time with God and know him better and look different after quarantine when we're able to go out, um, back into the world? Because I think this is a really sweet, sweet chance to kind of change just a lot about our world and about how we live. Um, and it would be a shame if we didn't take advantage of it. So please, after you finish this video, go find a quiet space and take some time to think about that question. How are you going to come out of this transformed? Um, and to end, I would love to pray again before you go spend some time thinking about that question. And Lord, gosh, what a gift it is to have this extra time that we could get to know you in ways that we wouldn't otherwise. Lord, I ask that 
you would just be with us and reveal your will for us as we spend more time with you, Lord, that you would get rid of distractions and that we could come to know you better. And we thank you for all the ways that you're moving. We pray that you would allow us to see them really clearly um, and remind us that we're your children. It's in your name we pray. Amen. After you spend some time journaling, praying, or whatever that looks like for you, if you come up with a plan of how you want to spend your time better um, or have really cool ideas, I'm sure that myself or any of your leaders would love to hear um, just what you got out of your time. So please don't hesitate to text, call um, a leader or a friend, and just let them know what you have been thinking about and what the Lord put on your heart in that time. Um, we love you and cannot wait to hear from you and see you again. Have a great day.